Welcome to the Philip Cockrum channel. I'm excited to get back into making videos for you guys. It's been a long time. There's uh, so much been happening and so much going on. Um, as you can see here on the table, we've got all kinds going on. So um, just quickly before we begin, um, you know, I like to keep my videos kind of just natural and free flowing, right? Um, I don't like doing a whole bunch of editing. I think that's uh, unnatural. Um, and you know, the videos are the length that they're gonna be right you know some of the planes that i'm going to be unboxing they're really simple to you know unbox and assemble and some of them are more involved right but i want you guys to feel the excitement that i feel when I, when i'm unboxing them um i'm you know i've been into rc stuff for a long time but i'm getting back into uh it recently and so a lot of these things are are new to me but not new to you guys um, so anyway, let's just jump into it, right? And see what we got going on here. So I blame these mini warbirds, um, for getting me all back into this hobby there and stuff, right? And costing me thousands of dollars, right? I thought it was just going to be a few dollars here and there, but, uh, you know, here we are. <laughs> so, um, you know, when these first came out there, they were a little expensive for my taste for, you know, the size and everything like that, right? You know, but it was acknowledging the capabilities and having full rudder control and uh, ailerons and stuff like that. It's pretty cool. Um, but then they, you know, in the uh, summer, they started coming down in price and uh, became much more affordable. Um, you know, the downside of a lot of these uh, uh, smaller things and a lot of especially these RTR things is the controller on them. The controller is terrible, right? You know, they're often way too small for man size hands and they're not very responsive and, and whatnot, right? But as many of you know, you can bind these things to better controllers like our Radio Master and uh, um, Spectrum controllers. And there's many controllers out there. So um, we're going to talk about some of that in, uh, in uh, upcoming in the future and do some uh, radio comparisons, right? I found the binding trick to these little E10 things uh, to show you guys later. Um, uh, I've got all kinds of airplanes, as you can see from the thumbnail and some of the other shots to show you guys, right? But there's also some uh, helicopters coming up, um, some of the latest, greatest uh things out there um also some new tech stuff to show you that uh, i'm excited about just before we unbox this plane i want to show you a little battery deal that i found as uh, many of you know you can get some of these you know planes with multiple batteries and they're often a good deal to get them because they're only a dollar or two more for extra batteries right but sometimes that can mess up your shipping um in delivery times or something like that so just keep that in mind but anyway this deal was um this little four pack here with this little charger for like seven dollars i think it was um so these batteries are 600 milliamps right they're a little bit physically bigger obviously than these four and 500 milliamps that often come with the mini warbirds um but weight wise they're not that much different but you get um and they're 25c as well right so four batteries and that little charger for like seven dollars you can pay you know up to six or seven dollars just separately each for one of these batteries if you're not careful so um just a little tip or trick for you guys so i'm interested to see some of the differences between these little models we've got several companies making these things but there are some differences between them so we've got xk we've got eashin eashin um we've got will toys models of voluntex models um, and even some other, probably some other off-branded ones, right? All of the EA Sheen ones have come, uh, you know, fully assembled like this. But some of these guys need some assembly. Um, and uh, so, and they've got some different control boards in them. So that's one of the things that um, I want to see. And that's something excited about this plane is that you can plug in different receivers to it. So... Um, if you are not familiar with the history of the Rare Bear and what it is, um, you, you should look it up. Here's a couple of screenshots of some stuff off the web. It's a very interesting history to this plane. Uh, I highly suggest looking into it uh, if you've never looked it up before. Uh, a couple of specs of the plane there. Yeah, 400 and... 4,500 horsepower it's estimated to have, 500 
28 miles per hour. It set a whole bunch of uh, all kinds of records and stuff like that. So here's how it comes in the box. I've already took a peek inside because I was interested to compare this to the uh, uh, Eashim Razorback. So there's your manual. All kinds of good information. Tells you about those different receiver ports there. So it can take a Futaba 5 volt receiver plugged into it or a DSM 3 point, what is it, 3 volt receiver can plug right into the board on this plane. Um, maybe we've got this fancy little startup card type of thing. Oh, it's all like laminated and whatever, that's pretty nice. Nice clear instructions on everything. Of course, we don't need those. <laughs> we got a couple of spare props. Um, and the prop thing there, too, I also found you can get um, um, a lot of these props, as you've seen in a lot of these mini warbirds, are the same, um, even though they might be marketed different. Um, I found, like, you can buy a 10-pack of props for, you know, like $10, right? Like, less than, less than that, I think it was, you know, a dollar a piece, right? Um, so you might need, though, your your breakaway hubs um, and your spinners are going to be different. You see this one's got a huge gold spinner on it, right? Um, so we got a couple of spare props. We've got this one came with I think two or three batteries. So the battery on this one's a little bit different shape as you can see it's a kind of like more of a stick form. It's a 400 milliamp though, the same as those other ones. We've got our wheels. Yeah, so there's three batteries. Um, our little charging USB dealy goes aside, and here's our little plane. As you can see, we need a little bit of assembly here. It's um, what is it? 380 millimeters. I should have held up the specs on the box there for you guys. 380, yes. There it is there. Anybody wants to pause on that? To and check the differences between those planes. The other side of the box, it shows you that receiver. Again, show you the three different models. There's actually another one too, a 290 that I've ordered as well, which is some kind of jet, um, an S16 or something like that. Anyway, back into this unboxing. That's why we're here, Philly. Um, so there's our little fuselage there. So there's really not too much to assemble here. We've got, you know, two screws. <laughs> and that's it. So it's not really a big deal, but you don't really have a box to store it in like the other guys. Um, it's kind of crappy packaging, but it's efficient, right? So I would rather them save money on packaging and spend it on the plane than vice versa, right? As long as the packaging is adequate. So there's our little controller. I'm guessing there's some little screws somewhere. Let me pause the video, find those, screw this thing together, and we'll uh, put the wheels on and fire it up. Well, I guess some of you folks probably want to see the assembly, so let's uh, just show you what's going on here. There's not too much involved. Um, you're going to need some little tweezers or something to get that plug into that board. I guess you could take the screw off that servo and move the rod out of the way to make it a little bit easier to get some fat fingers down in there, but this uh, made it very easy. And some better tools definitely make these jobs go easier. I mean, the stuff that comes with these things is adequate, right? But this one here has the swivel on the end and it makes putting in these little screws a lot easier. So um, it doesn't, the instructions are, are okay, but they don't tell you where these little screws go. And it doesn't look like they ask for anything on the landing gear. So, you know, plug in your wing to the board, make sure your wires tucked out of the way. It's a nice little surprise here for you. It fits, it fits perfect. You see it lines up nice. But this battery compartment there is now is huge. You could fit like three or four batteries down in there. Um, I mean, it's just massive, right? 
So you might even want to put something in there to stop your battery from moving it or moving around right in flight because there's it's just cavernous in there um you know all the other ones you know so some of them are actually quite tight right and you're really jamming that battery in there i'd recommend you trimming out a little bit of foam if that's the deal it's not going to affect your plane you know and you won't see it because it's inside there right um you know you shouldn't be forcing any of those lipos um even if it's against foam and stuff like that right but i mean you could fit a huge battery inside this thing right just massive um so let's pop in our little screws here it's got nice little plastic reinforced uh, uh area around the attachment and into the uh, actual body of the plane Having half decent tools makes your life a lot easier, I tell you. And because this stuff is so small, even quality tools for this hobby are not expensive. So I took the two longest screws out of there. Um, one of them's a little bit fatter. I think that's supposed to be an extra prop screw. And um, I'll show you that in a second because I found something interesting there too. Um, the props. The This model has a prop saver on it too, but it's a different kind than the Iashim ones. So the Iashim prop does not want to go onto this one. Okay, but the XK prop does fit onto the Sheen hubs and so the e the xk hub is a little bit longer than this one it's um almost almost double the shaft length on it and it's got a flat spot so it can't turn and it's a um a better quality softer black plastic than this hard white plastic and uh, this one here has already snapped um uh on me so um are they interchangeable yes and no <laughs> um it looks to me like this prop saver these two pieces are a better evolution than this one to me um i like it better it seems to be a more uh better setup right so we've got our uh plane assembled it says to just put the wings so they the landing gear to rake forward just like that and the rear one to rake backwards which i've already got in and that's it um you know the wheels are the same as the ac ones but at least they actually do spin on these um as opposed to the Sheen ones there that don't want to spin so that's it there's nothing else to set up or or do um i really like how they've got these control rods um set up inside the wing here um i don't know how much that's going to zoom or if it's putting it very but it's all internal here you can't see any rod sticking out like you can on on these so again it's like an evolution to me in the design right and i mean that's not causing a whole lot of drag on such a small plane, but it's still, it's a bit ugly, right? You know, um, where this is a much nicer thing. They've got like a little, you know, um, a little U-shaped bar connected to your servo inside there, if you saw, um, to control the, the two. So again, it's like an evolution, I think, of the design a little bit better. Um, so that's it. We're going to put some batteries in the thing and just fire it up and make sure your control surfaces work and uh, then we're out of here so i've got batteries in the uh, controller it's a nice little controller i like it um it feels a little bit better than the ea sheen ones there in your hands a little bit nicer quality and so forth right um so this battery compartment again is huge we'll just show you how easy this big 600 milliamp battery drops in there just boom like that 
see the little light is on. We'll do a little control surface check. Ailerons, left and right, up and down, rudder, throttle. I can already see some mixing going in on the tail when I put the throttle on. And we do have our different uh, flight modes, so that's definitely in safe. Uh, or beginner, you can see how much travel is happening on the wings. I think it's this button here. Yep, you turn it to uh, expert, it would turn that off. So I think there's just the two modes to it. Yep. See how much travel is happening there? That's quite a bit. So I think there's just the two modes to this plane. We'll get out and we'll see that in the flight test. Um, thanks for watching today. Love and peace to all of you.